In this video for topics 3.6 and 3.7, we're going to be taking a quick look at age structure diagrams and total fertility rate. When we observe the demographic makeup of a particular population, those observations prove useful in predicting its growth and characteristics. Whether a population experiences positive or negative growth, as well as the rate of growth, can be predicted. A number of factors influence those characteristics. A population's social and economic statuses, cultural values, political incentives and directives, and religious prevalence and adherence are all variables in the equation of population growth. Before considering the underlying influences behind population growth, Let's take a look at how one can analyze the composition of a population to predict future growth. A useful model for doing so is age structure. Age structure quantifies two main features of a population, the proportion of females and males within a particular age range. In an age structure diagram like this, the y-axis represents individuals that fall within age range categories, 0 to 4 years old, 5 to 9 years old, 10 to 14 years old, etc. On the x-axis, we would find either the percentage of those individuals in the population, or, as in this diagram, the absolute number of individuals within each group. To read this diagram, let's use a couple of examples in the U.S. in 2020. This age structure tells us that there are approximately 10 million males between the ages of 60 and 64 years old. We can also see that there are 2.5 million females aged 85 to 89 years old. With any age structure diagram, we can also imagine a population existing in three much larger categories. First are the pre-reproductive age individuals those that are in the teenage years and below. The second group is those people in their 20s, 30s, and 40s who are actively reproducing as they are in their child-producing years. The final group are those individuals in their late 40s and 50s and up who are no longer having children. In these age structure diagrams from Japan and the Congo, we can identify three different and distinct shapes. In the U.S., the population of individuals in the pre-reproductive age groups and the population of individuals in their child-producing years are more or less the same. This results in those two population groups forming a column-shaped outline. A population like this is one that would be experiencing slow, positive growth. In the example of Japan, however, we can see that the pre-reproductive age population is much smaller than those older individuals who are having children. In this case, a narrower base results in a V-shape, and the population, like this, is experiencing negative growth, a decrease in size. In the final example, the Congo has its largest portion of the population represented by the youngest individuals. A population like this, with its pyramid shape, is one that would be predicted to experience rapid, positive growth. But not only are age structure diagrams useful for making predictions about the future, they can also carry indications of past events. For example, this age structure diagram of China exhibits indentations in the groups of people from their mid-30s and mid-40s. Between about 1959 and 1961, largely attributed to a set of government policies collectively referred to as the Great Leap Forward, China experienced a massive famine that resulted in the deaths of up to 55 million people. In the years that followed, that famine resulted in a sharp drop in the number of children that people had. Additionally, the shorter population bars from the 30 to 34-year-old to the 15 to 19 year old age group is an artifact of China's one child policy. Total fertility rate, or TFR, is a statistic that goes by many other names. 
it is an estimate of the average number of children that a woman will have in her lifetime. This world map illustrates the TFR by country. Those countries, color-coded in shades of blue and green, have a total fertility rate of around two or below. Those in orange, red, and purple have increasingly higher TFRs, reaching as many as seven or eight children per female. In order to determine TFR, two important variables must be taken into account. The first is that she experiences a consistent reproductive rate throughout her childbearing years. This is generally accepted to mean that a female between the ages of 15 and 49 will produce children at a consistent rate throughout those years. The second variable relies on the female surviving to the end of her reproductive life. If she dies, for example, in her early 20s, then she obviously won't be producing any children in the future. The influences on total fertility rate can be grouped into three general categories, education, life expectancy, and affluence. Those three categories are collectively measured with a statistic called Human Development Index, or HDI. In this world map, those countries in the darker shades of blue have relatively higher HDIs than those countries with lighter blues. The relationship between TFR and HDI is inverse. As education, life expectancy, and wealth increase, total fertility rate decreases. The observation is that in societies with more access to education, healthy diets and access to health care that increase life expectancy and money, people have fewer children. Let's look more closely at specific individual variables that influence total fertility rate. If a female has a child earlier in life, that means she will have more childbearing years, allowing her to have a greater number of children. In the second half of the 1900s, and this is a trend that has continued to today, females are waiting longer before they have their first child. In the 1940s, women on average began having children at around 22 to 23 years old. That age increased over the subsequent decades and has most recently made its way to almost 30 years old. With greater access to education, specifically for females, there is a decrease in TFR. There are a few generally accepted connections between education and TFR. First is that educated females have the knowledge necessary to care for children better, which increases their likelihood of survival, meaning that females have a lesser desire to have more children. Having an education generally confers more economic opportunities to females, also decreasing the desire to have more children, and it also improves the effective use of contraceptives. Matching a trend seen in practically every country, the percent of women in the workforce has increased, especially in the latter half of the 20th century. In the United States, in the 1950s, just over a third of women participated in the workforce. But by the turn of the last century, that number had doubled to 60%. In this chart, we can see the inverse relationship between fertility and contraceptive use. In this selection of countries, we can see that greater contraceptive use, unsurprisingly, leads to fewer children. Social and religious practices also play a role in how many children a female has. In some cultures, there is a pressure placed on females that leads to a sense of obligation around having children. This pressure can be amplified by some religious belief systems that promote the creation of new life, while at the same time discouraging and perhaps even forbidding the use of contraceptives. Government policies can also be effective in either encouraging or discouraging having children, and there are numerous examples of such policies. Beginning in the late 1960s, Romania had a number of very aggressive policies to encourage childbearing. Abortion and contraception were banned, mandatory pregnancy tests were conducted, 
and taxes and legal discrimination on childless people were imposed. On the other hand, to discourage having children and slow population growth, perhaps one of the most famous examples of a government policy is China's so-called one-child policy that was in effect from 1978 to 2015. According to estimates from the Chinese government, approximately 400 million births were prevented due to those measures that were in place during those years. In Japan, a country currently experiencing negative growth, the government is attempting to encourage dating, marriage, and sex through ad campaigns that promote having children. In 2002, the Australian government implemented what they called a baby bonus, which was a financial incentive to have children. In the United States, tax incentives exist that are available to people who have children. The child tax credit allows for a $2,000 credit for each child that's under the age of 17. In circumstances that lead to either the death or infertility of a female who hasn't reached or is still in her childbearing years, total fertility rate decreases. Replacement reproduction is the concept around total fertility rate that is necessary to maintain a population size. Every individual will eventually die, so in order to maintain a population, there must be an individual to replace them. Since it takes two individuals to create a child, the hypothetical replacement fertility rate should be two. Two parents produce two children, the two parents will eventually die, so the two children have replaced them in the population. But in reality, the actual replacement TFR is currently 2.1, and a major factor behind this is infant or child mortality. To increase the chances that a child is healthy enough to survive to reproductive maturity, mothers must have access to healthy, nutritious diets. Additionally, having access to health care before, during, and around, and after childbirth promotes the health of the child. Child mortality is a metric that accounts for the death of a child under the age of five. In this map, the country shaded blue and light blue have relatively lower child mortalities than those that are shaded yellow and orange. Child mortality includes a second measure called infant mortality. Infant mortality is an accounting of those children that don't reach their first birthday. This map highlights countries with a low infant mortality rate in the lightest shades of yellow, and higher infant mortality rates are represented by darker yellows and increasingly darker oranges. Those countries with higher child and infant mortality rates tend to have higher total fertility rates since children are less likely to survive. That brings those two topics to a close. Thanks for watching and take care.